poorly informed, how poorly educated a lot of Americans are about what we do know and don't know about things like geography and history, current affairs, literature. For instance, there are some college students in this country who think that Kurt Waldheim is a TV anchorman and that James Joyce was the first female Supreme Court justice. Some of those students believe that Havana is the capital of the Philippines and that Karl Marx was one of the Marx brothers. These answers come from a 100-question test of general knowledge, essential or trivial. Here's a sample. Identify the following people. Albert Schweitzer, J. Edgar Hoover, Jonas Salk, Norman Rockwell, Charles Darwin, Ho Chi Minh, Benito Mussolini. Here's a sample of the geography questions. Where are the following places located? Nagasaki, Cape Town, Tripoli, Belfast, Managua, Alamogordo. What did you get? I got a 58. Okay. I had a 62%. Uh, you expected to get uh, at least 70. What did you get? I got a 41. How did you do on the test? On this test, a 46.5. Not so good. Not real good. Real lousy. The test was devised and given by this man, Professor Jamie O'Neill. O'Neill teaches English at South Puget Sound Community College in Olympia, Washington. South Puget is a junior college whose 3,300 students average 31 years of age. Many of them adults who'd never gone to college before or who had dropped out earlier. Many of them are also full-time parents and workers. In his years of teaching, Professor O'Neill had grown more and more dubious about what his students did or did not know about literature and history, current events and geography. He sensed that he could no longer count on them to grasp some of the most common references that he would make in class. O'Neill first gave the test a year ago, and he agreed to revise it and give it again to this year's English classes. What were some of the most surprising answers? And how many didn't know who John Sump was? Didn't know. Lot. He was the fellow who developed the polio vaccine. And in fact, the reason why some of us in this room are whole, who might not otherwise be, is because of that man who's still alive, and that was in the 50s. Some people found him to be a freedom fighter. Somebody said he was a character in a recent movie about the Civil War played by Stacy Keach. Um, somebody thought Ralph Nader was an astronaut. Somebody else thought Ralph Nader was a communist, and somebody else thought he was a news reporter. There may be a lot of stuff on that test that I don't really care. Person who answered this test, Arthur Miller, no answer. Woody Guthrie, no answer. Ethel Rosenberg, no answer. Jack Benny, musician. Charles Manson, insane killer. He got that one right. The young man who gave those answers is 19 and says that he wants to be a psychoanalyst. I never crack a book. I never study. I haven't done so since about my sophomore year in high school. And I've always gotten at least C's, B's, and some A's. You wound up with a 49 and a half score out of 100. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where Melbourne is, or Alamogordo, or Calcutta, no, or I Havana, don't. or don't Kiev. Know. Ever heard of Kiev? No. Bogota, Barcelona? I've heard of them. I couldn't tell you all about them, but I've heard of them. Okay. Enough to get by, basically. Albert Schweitzer, World War II world war criminal. Uh, somebody thought he was a piano player. <laughs> a lot of people seem to think J. Edgar Hoover was a president. That's an easy misunderstanding, confusing him with Herbert Hoover. Uh, McCarthy, Joseph McCarthy. Anybody remember the McCarthy hearings? A lot of you have to read about that in the history books. Uh, lived in Germany during World War II. A lot of people want to put people in Germany in World War II. Intelligence figure, a communist. Boy, he's probably spinning in his grave over that one. <laughs> The week we filmed this report, Kurt Waldheim, formerly Secretary General of the United Nations, was all over the news. He was running for the presidency of Austria amidst allegations that he had collaborated with the Nazis during World War II. One thing that surprised me last night in helping to correct the tests was how few of you knew who Kurt Waldheim is. Those who, who answered wrong, please raise your hands. <laughs> more than half of the people, and yet he's been in the news on the front pages of the newspapers across America and in magazines for the last month, fairly solidly. It just isn't sinking in, or maybe it's flashing by too fast, and they've got other more important things to worry about, because it doesn't affect their life. 
Waldheim is not an interesting name to begin with. Uh, it's not here. So why read it? Kurt Waldheim is the... Uh, mm -hmm. I, he's something in Germany, isn't he? Is he the chancellor? What would be the significance of us knowing Wolheim, him running for Austria? I mean, his name is in the news. He's in the name. Yeah. What's the significance of their knowing at this moment who Kurt Wolheim is, uh, Professor O'Neill? I think if there are people who uh, once held global positions uh, as Secretary General of the UN who perhaps were engaged in Nazi war crimes, I think that's significant. There is a strong supposition that those of you in the media are in part part of the problem why because when i read a book or my students read a book there is an opportunity to pause and look at the ceiling and think about what you've read mm -hmm. on the nightly news however it is not perhaps surprising that some people found beirut to be in northern ireland because it goes right by them and they make a connection beirut you're on to the next story which is in northern ireland who do you think ferdinand marcos is maybe something to do with russia i don't know I didn't even know what to say about Winston Churchill. <laughs> you know, I've heard about him all my life, but I didn't know exactly what he did or when he even lived. Where is Beirut? Lebanon. What is a contra? Contra aid, um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, come on. Um, contra, C O N T R A. I don't know. Irving Berlin. William Westmoreland. No. <laughs> she got good grades in high school, in part by taking courses like blanket crocheting. That's how I got my grade, is by finished my blanket that I was crocheting. And I took um, TAs, which are teacher assistants, and we just ran around the halls and delivered messages to teachers. And we had so many choices, we didn't hardly have to have anything when I was a junior and senior in high school. We have been called a nation of geographic illiterates. Listen to what some of Jamie O'Neill's students didn't know about geography. In the aftermath of the Beirut bombing, and uh, an endless number of repetitions of that place name, uh, it turned up that um, nearly 40% of my students didn't know where Beirut was. Beirut was in Iran, West Germany, Israel, and Libya. What's that? Moves around a lot. Yes, it does move around a bit. And it's embarrassing to me to realize how little I know about things that I should know. Some of them I don't think are real, real important. I think they are trivial. Can I address the trivia question? Cuban Missile Crisis I put on there because I remember finding students in my class who didn't know a thing about it. Maybe it's trivial, but we were on the brink of uh, nuclear annihilation with the Soviet Union. Does it matter that we forget that? I think it does matter. How many people miss Tripoli? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of about twenty. Ten out of about twenty, Miss Tripoli. It's been on the news a lot. We yeah. just bombed it. <laughs> what does the test prove? Uh, I'm not sure that it proves anything. To me, what it suggested was that common knowledge isn't all that common. Um, Therefore? Therefore, politicians who are speaking to people perhaps can get away with a little bit more obfuscation than we might expect. Um, therefore, um, people who are um, voting and making decisions on things um, may be able to more readily sell a bill of goods. Who's responsible for this state of affairs? There's plenty of blame to go around. Blame for teachers and for the society that pays their salaries. I think, in a way, we're getting about what we pay for. When you entice people into a profession with a beginning salary of about fourteen, fifteen thousand a year, you're not necessarily going to always get the best people, and they're not always going to be able to keep their will uh, going. I've been in this business for sixteen years. I make twenty-four thousand a year. I just paid off my student loans a couple of years ago, and um, I would leave tomorrow if a job in writing or something else came up. That would be fine with Jamie O'Neill's critics who believe the fault lies not with the students, not with the system, but with trivia tests like his. Um, you saw some of my mail from people who are um, writing from educational institutions. A lot of people who think that you're just a damn fool. Yeah, sure. Um, that it's a phony, yeah. signifies nothing, yeah. bad sample. Uh, indeed, or that, yes, or that none of these questions um, indicate anything um, much except some faulty priorities of my own.
What responsibility do parents bear in all this? For a child, for example, who didn't know the alphabet when he got to kindergarten? I had absolutely no learning from home whatsoever. I was pushed to public schools with C's and D's. I never learned Shakespeare. I never read a book in my life. I didn't read a book in my life until I was probably 28 years old. The family I came from with factory worker and parents. They believed that the factories were the way of life, that education was not the way of life. And I worked for the post office for six years. My father thought that was the greatest thing in the world. They think that this is the dumbest move on my part, giving up my $30,000 a year salary, to come to college so that I can do something, so that I can make enough money, so that I can make sure that my children get into the good schools in life. Professor O'Neill, one angry critic wrote you, in the field of computer science, I have found no need for history or geography. Uh, I think that's a, that's a simple, um, there's a simple response to that. Our lives are not contained in our work. Um, the real question of an education is not simply to give you means to acquire a living, but a means of making a life. What good does it do a person to gain some narrow uh, level of technical skill, and then what does that person do when the whistle blows or when he goes home? There's more to life than that, and I would like to think that it includes literature, art, painting, um, filmmaking, politics, being a citizen. It would seem to speak to a kind of intellectual laziness. All I know from this test is that, in my view, something's wrong. Something is wrong. Would Professor O'Neill's test get the same results at a four-year college, from a class of high school seniors, at a 25th high school reunion? Judging from the reaction Professor O'Neill has gotten from academic colleagues and others across the country, the answer he believes is yes.